Part two, let's try to rebuild Jewish credibility. Obviously, as we, re as we rebuild Jewish credibility, keep in the back of your mind, perhaps the technique that I'm using to rebuild Jewish credibility might be able to rebuild the credibility of another religion, right? Keep that in the back of your mind. Here we go. Okay, now. I should have mentioned this at the beginning. I have certain biases in my style of analysis, and as you well know, the biases in style of analysis will bias a certain conclusion. So I should confess to you my biases so that it's obvious and you can make a judgment whether or not you like the bias that I have. My teachers throughout university always told me you are not allowed to suck theories out of your thumb. <laughs> that is, you cannot make stuff up. If you want to propose a theory, the theory must bubble up from data. You must have evidence. To the extent you have evidence, you can open your mouth. You don't have evidence, then keep your mouth shut because anything that you say without evidence is essentially religion and we're trying to avoid leaps of faith. So therefore, the whole game has to be played by looking at the concrete evidence. What do we know for sure? Okay, so let's take a look at one piece of data that we know for sure. We know for sure that at some point, somebody or a group of people, an individual or a group of people must by the way, for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to assume Judaism is a lie, right? I hope that does not offend anybody, right? If it does, please relax. Um, um, but it, it, it is sometimes very, very helpful to seriously entertain uh, the, all possibilities. So let's seriously entertain the possibility that Judaism is a lie. We're dealing with mythology. One fact that we know is that at some point, the liar or group of liars uh, must have made a claim about mass revelation. How do I know this? Because the story of mass revelation is recorded in every copy of the Torah on planet Earth. That is, if you walk in to any orthodox shul, any conservative synagogue, any reformed temple, any museum on the planet, if you look at fragments that were collected from archaeological finds all around the planet, they all contain the same verses, right, which say over and over and over again throughout the book that there was this event at Mount Sinai where three million people heard God speak. So if Every document that we find contains a story about a mass revelation. At some point, a liar or group of liars must have either written such a story or they must have said it orally and then at some point later it was recorded. But at some point, somebody lied and said there was a mass revelation. What I'm saying is so obvious you don't even understand why I'm insisting on this. But it's obvious that someone must have lied and made a, story, made a claim about mass revelation. What I would like to do is, I would like to go back to the moment where the lie about mass revelation is first told. When someone first says every single man, woman, and child in the Jewish tradition heard God speak. When they made that lie, whether that's 500 years ago or 5,000 years ago or 50,000 years ago, whenever you want to say it happened, I would like to envision what actually took place. Now, I'm going to give you a technique which is very, very helpful generally in resolving questions like this. Don't speak in generalities. Speak in very specific, concrete terms. What happened? What did the liars say? What were the words the liars said? If you speak in generalities, it can sound great what you're saying until you analyze more carefully. What I'm going to show you is, well, let's actually just dive in. I believe that the original lie could only have taken one of three forms. There were only three things that the original liar could have said. So, again, assuming that Judaism is a lie. That is, when I say Judaism here, I'm really referring to the story of the Sinai revelation, assuming that that's mythology. So, there are three possible lies that could have been told. Uh, one lie I will call the past lie, the present lie, and the future lie. Okay, now, these words refer to which generation did the charismatic cult leader claim heard God speak? Which generation did the charismatic cult leader claim heard God speak? So let's play this out. The simplest version of the lie would be the present lie. And the charismatic cult leader comes to a group of people and he says to them, he says, you just heard God speak. Present lie. It's 
present lie because which generation does the charismatic cult leader claim heard God speak? The present generation. Now again, we're going back 50 or 500 or 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000 years, whenever you want to put this event, the charismatic cult leader comes to a group of people and he says, you heard God speak. Yeah, to make this very concrete, let's go back to that moment. I'm going to play the charismatic cult leader. You guys are going to play the wild-eyed cult followers. And I come to you and I say to you that you all heard God speak. Right? You believe me. You tell your children. We all heard God speak. They tell their children. We all heard God speak. And a lie is up and running. Okay? It's a very simple model. Okay, now, let's take a look at a, a, a slightly more complex model. The past model, the charismatic cult leader says, it was not the present generation who heard God speak. What do I say? I say, none of you heard God speak. Because it was long ago at the foot of the great mountain, Sinai. And there was a great leader there, Moses. And all of your ancestors were there. God came down on the mountain. And God said, I'm the Lord your God. You should have no other gods before me. Moshe, Moshe, come up to the top of the mountain. Moses went up on the mountain, got the Torah, brought it down, gave it to your ancestors. They all became Orthodox Jews. They were fully observant for three or four generations. And then there was a terrible, now insert whatever you want, flood, assimilation, war, disease, whatever it was, right? The entire tradition about Mount Sinai was forgotten. No one in your family has known about it for 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20 generations, 500, 1,000 years, whatever you want to say, until I, Fred, came back to give you your tradition. I hand you a copy of the Torah, and you're so blown away by my charisma that you all cry out in unison, Amen! And the religion is up and running. Okay, now this is called past lie, where I say it was your ancestors who heard God. By the way, just for clarity's sake, why is it so important in past lie that I not only say there was a Moses, and I not only say that I'm Fred and giving you the Torah, but I say that there was a gap in between where the entire tradition of Sinai was lost. Why can't I just tell you, long ago your ancestors received the Torah at Mount Sinai, it was passed down directly to your parents, and I have a copy of the Torah as well. Why can't I say that? You'll fact check with your parents, and your parents will say, sweetie, you're in a cult. <laughs> and the whole thing will explode. Yeah, people are stupid, but they're not that stupid. So therefore, in order to maintain some sort of credibility, I have to say that uh, the tradition was lost for a period. If I was to rename past lie, I would call it Moses Gap Fred Theory. You've got to insert a gap, because otherwise the claim that there was a Moses who passed the Torah all the way down to this generation becomes literally incredible. OK, so there's the present lie, which is fairly simple. The past lie includes a gap. Uh, the future lie. OK, in the future lie, I'm put, I find this a little bit ridiculous, but I'm putting it up here because I want to be absolutely complete. I don't want there any holes. And then if there's no holes, then we can do a complete analysis, and you'll feel at the end that all the holes were sealed. OK. In the future lie, the charismatic cult leader doesn't say that you heard God speak. He doesn't say that your ancestors heard God speak. Instead, he says that your descendants will hear God speak. It's not you. It's going to be your descendants. right? Your, all of your descendants are going to arrive at a mountain called Sinai, and there's going to be a great leader there, Moses. God's going to say, I'm the Lord your God. You have no other gods before me. He's going to call Moses up to the top of the mountain. Moses is going to get the Torah, bring it down, give it to the Jews. The Jews are all going to become observant. And I happen to have an advanced copy of the book right here. <laughs> I hand you the book, and you're so blown away by my charisma that you all cry out in unison, amen. amen. And the religion is up and running. So here, the lie is that your descendants will hear God speak. OK. Fine. Now, watch what I've done. We know with certainty that at some point, somebody told a lie about a mass revelation. We know that because it's in every copy of the Torah on the planet. Okay. Now, what I want to know is what was the original lie that was told? I'm making the claim that the original lie that was told had to be either you heard God speak, your ancestors heard God speak, or your descendants will hear God speak. There is no other lie that could be told. Why? Because where in history are, going to, are you going to place the mass revelation? There's only three possibilities. 
You place it in the present, you place it in the past, or you place it in the future. Is that clear? So now, watch the advantage of this particular logical structure. What happens if I show you that for technical reasons, the future lie could never have launched Judaism? Then you would know that the original lie that launched Judaism was the present or the past. Now let's say that I show you that the future lie and the present lie would never have worked. Then you would know that the lie of Judaism was launched with the past lie. What happens if I show you that the future, the present, and the past lie would never have launched Judaism? Then you would have to conclude. OK, we're not going to conclude that. We're going to go someplace else right now. Let's actually investigate and see where it goes. OK, here we go. Mm -hmm.